wet Captain William here. If you have something really special that you need, head out to our Patreon site. We'll be doing Doc Box Talks, but in between, you need something, we can answer it and take care of your issues. So Doc Box Talks are going to be somewhat technical. If you're not into technical things, you might want to fast forward. But there's a lot of small things here within the video that will give you a lot of pointers on how to save money, use things that are correct, and at the same time get a job done without having to call in a professional. We'll start today with a problem. Everybody has the same problem. Water purity, water filtra filtration, how do you keep water clean, how do you use it? And I'm not talking about drinking water because drinking water should be properly filtered, bottled, etc. But most of the places you're going to be taking water from, the little small filter that you see out on the dock, is able to take down one, two, three microns of bacteria, viral, Installation of any type of water filter is going to be relatively the same, whether it's a large one, small one, whether it's under the sink or whether it's down inside the bilge. In this case, the solution is a water filter or water purifier. I was able to pick up a used system, which is quite large. And the reason why I'm using this system, A, I was able to get it at Sailor Man at a very good price, but B, I want to test it on our current boat, and if it's going to be functioning properly, then I will move it from the current boat to our motor sailor. Typically when you scour around the flea markets, the marine markets, etc., you will find items like this because they've been removed from somebody's boat, or someone has changed the system, or they found out that the filtering system is so expensive that they would just rather buy a little lower cost unit. This is a very expensive unit. It's meant for very large yachts, but it doesn't need to be used on large yachts. So effectively, any water filter is gonna work for your water consumption need. This one came with fittings that naturally were not correct. The next thing that you wanna do is, is have the items when you start a project at all possible. If you're near a hardware store or you're in an area where you can go pick up items, in this case, I went to the hardware store and got the correct fittings, the adapters, uh, the hose clamps, and the various items needed for doing this installation. It's very important to understand that pipe diameters are always measured with the ID, the inside diameter. So in this case, if we measure this, we would have a one half inch ID. So you would, give, you would be getting a one half inch hose. Now one half inch hose means that's the size of it inside. You don't measure the outside of a hose. So you always will be looking at ID. The boat that we're putting this on today happens to have the water line hoses that are currently here, which in this you will see that we have a 3 8 ID. So we had to go from a pipe fitting, which is a one inch pipe fitting, and reduce it down, in this case it was one inch pipe fitting, reduce it down to a three quarter fitting, and then reduce it from three quarter fitting down to one half for the hose. Grab any old tape that you have laying around. Everybody always has duct tape. You can use duct tape, just wrap it around your threads. No, no, no. Don't ever use anything other than what's made for the pipe thread. Don't use any other tape. Duct tape is good for fixing things, but it's temporary. You have to make sure that you have a thread sealant tape. And the thread sealant tape will work for fuels, liquids, fluids, air, it's a specialized tape. In this case, it's a PTFE pipe sealant tape. I always buy the wider tape so that we have enough area for doing both small threads and large threads. What's important here is you're going to take each fitting, and this looks really easy to use when you're inside and there's not any wind. When the wind's blowing around, 
you always have to hold on to it because it can unravel. So you hold on to it and you put it over your threads, making sure that you don't cover up the hole and you wrap the thread with the tape, typically two times. Now because this is larger tape, it's gonna overhang, which is okay, and then pull it off. So now you have a sealant tape on the threads because pipe threads start out really thin and smaller on the beginning and they get larger as you go deeper. But people think that you tighten down a thread and it's gonna stop leaking in fluids. It does not. What stops the leaking fluids is the threaded material, the tape, or some type of sealant. So you can't rely just on thread to thread for sealing. We're going to apply this tape to all of the fittings. Something very important, I need not say it, I can't say it enough, we've all experienced it. When you're doing dock box repair, or you're doing marina repair, or you're doing boat repair, the biggest problem you'll find is dropping things in the water. They'll bounce once, they'll bounce twice, and they'll end up in the water. And if you lose one fitting in the water because you weren't careful, your project is finished. This is why the duct tape is here. When you bring out a piece of duct tape, you can put small items inside of it, and that way you have a safety area and when the wind comes by or you turn around you're less apt to knock something over. Dropping a wrench is not fun, it ruins your day. Now that we have properly put the tape around fitting, we will take the fitting and slowly thread it into the existing fittings. And it, this happens with all different sizes. It's always the same, whether it's large or whether it's tiny, you're always going to be using sealing tape. What's also important is you make sure that you don't have any tape and pieces hanging over the edge. And when you're applying it, you don't have anything hanging over the edge. Now, in this case, it'll just get stuck in the filter. You don't want to impede any of your flow. The other thing I see a lot of people do is they'll start this, these two out and then they'll put this one on there and then they'll take a wrench here and they'll start tightening it down. That's not really the correct way of putting in different types of fittings. The correct way is that you thread each fitting in until it gets to its point of resistance and then you put the smaller in. That way you're not putting applied pressure. I don't have a crescent wrench here of this size and I don't have a wrench of this size. We're going to use a pipe wrench and the pipe wrench is pretty much able to adjust to different sizes. Now you don't want to over tighten it because you may have to get it off one day. So as long as it gets tight where you feel resistance, pipe thread tape is going to make up for that small tolerance variance between the threads. So this is not going to leak. If by chance it was leaking a little bit, you can always give it a couple more tighten turns once you're actually putting this system under pressure. We'll do the same the smaller one. Small hint is that typically if you're going to go into town to pick something up, and you're going to walk for two miles, or you're gonna hitch a ride, or whatever means you have, take a piece of hose and cut it off and take it with you. Because you have metric, and you have British, and you have multiple standards of hoses. So you might find that you need a 10 millimeter hose, or you need a 3 8 hose. When you get to the hardware store, you may not have the right thing in the right bin. So you could pick something out and say, okay, this came from the right bin. And you get all the way back to the boat and you find out that somebody didn't know what they were doing. They took the wrong one, threw it in the wrong bin. So always take a piece of hose that you're trying to attach. Make sure that it fits in what you're buying. And make sure that the hose clamp that you're buying also has enough room to fit. So always take something with you. It's a very, very important tiny factor is that if you go with a picture or you go with a notebook or you go with a dimension, even in many countries, people don't speak the same language. 
But if you have a piece with you and you say, I have to go in here, someone's gonna help you out. So we're going to slug this thing down into the bottom of the boat. We have a tank, a water pump system, which is pressurized. Cut the output of that and put it here then take what we cut and put it here. And the reason for that is that the pump is gonna pressurize this tank, and now this tank is gonna have pressurized water inside of it. So it will also give us a little capacity. So when we're turning the sink on in the, in the kitchen or the bathroom, we're not gonna get that constant surge of water because it's gonna start pulling from the tank. So this is actually gonna give you two benefits, filtration of water and a little bit of surge capacity. While William stepped out, and doesn't see me hugging this big silver filter that might be my new love. I'm gonna say why we actually installing this filter on our boat. My problem was that for whatever reason, I started to have a crazy itching on my legs and I could not whatsoever take shower on this boat. Where we are now is we're all the way to the location of the water pump. In this case, it's a pressurized water pump system. There is a large tank under the master to stern. This water pump then turns on when we turn on the switch. It pumps up to 30 PSI, so it pressurizes the water system. And then anytime we utilize the water, the pump will come back on again. I'm also using our boat that we're currently living on as our test boat. Um, and that's what we're going to do right now is I'm temporarily, again, this is temporary. Uh, Yana has not been able to shower on the boat for two months. Analyze the water, the tanks are stainless steel, so there must be something in the system. So the best test ever is going to be whether or not she can shower after this installation of the filtering system. We're going to be taking the output side. The input side of this water pump has a small filter on it already. This is a little small disc filter on the side. It's really meant to take care of any type of rust chips or things that could damage the pump, but it's not at all designed to be working with bacteria, high levels of iron, calcium, or high mineralized water. You also see over time that when I install something, I'm big on plugs and connectors. I'm always installing connectors and plugs onto items so that I can unplug it, take the pump out, service it, do whatever work I need to take, and then come back and plug it in. So anytime I'm replacing something, I spend the extra time to get the proper plug or one similar, and now I can disconnect the pump for working on, but also I can disconnect it because I'm gonna work on it now. So if I was down here working and Yana accidentally flipped the water pump switch on, I don't want water flying all over the place. So rather than going up and saying, hey, don't use the water, when I unplug it, the pump is now disabled. There's no electricity to it. Now I can work on it with water and not be in fear of having electricity around me. My plan for now is because we're at, at anchor, or sorry, at the marina, I'm going to just stand the filter here. Later on, I'll find a mounting position for it. But for right now, I really want to just get it tested. So, remove the tie wrap. Another small detail is these hose clamps are used with a screwdriver. They never work right. The screwdriver slips off. You cut your hand. You don't tighten it properly. I always have one small ratchet with the correct fitting for hose clamps in my toolbox. This is glued on, so I'm not looking at using it for multi things. So this is always what I have for the hose clamps. This fits 90% of the hose clamps. So whenever I have to tighten a hose clamp, I'm down here underway, I can grab it, I can tighten every single hose clamp and I'm not trying to bounce around with a screwdriver. So this is another small tip that you probably would like to take. I'm gonna take off the, the, uh, feet, the output hose by loosening the hose clamp. Now we're gonna have some water. Luckily not a lot, wasn't a lot of pressure. And so this tube is going to be on one side. So I'm going to need another piece of tube to go from the filter down to this location. It looks like 
At this point I'm lucky and here's a piece of tube. That's going to be one side. This will be the other side. So now where I took that tube off, I'm going to install a new one. Always put your clamp on first. A lot of people slide it on and say, oh shit. <laughs> then you got to pull it back off again. We call it a rule of thumb. Clamp to thumb. Now clamp to thumb and you're always on. So anytime you do a hose, clamp to thumb. Now you know that you've got a tube. Before you install a tube, it's always going to slide in easier if you put a little bit of oil or something on it. You're always going to have sweat on a boat. So you can take the sweat, which has your own oil in it, and has lubrication effectively. So now when you slide it in position, it goes into position on the pump. Tighten the hose clamp. We have the correct lengths. Again, little natural oil. This is nasty. Well, you can also just suck on the end and it'll go on easier. Another issue is people think that a hose clamp, you should tighten it so tight that it rips the hoses through the center of it. And they're not designed for that. They're designed to compress the circumference of the tubing. So you tighten it until you just feel the rubber coming through the little serrations. You don't want them squeezing through, but you don't want them so loose. And then the other thing is you can normally, if you can't twist the hose, then you've got it tight enough. So if you over tighten it, you're gonna break the hose clamp, always. When I go to the hardware store, if I need four hose clamps, I buy eight. If I need two, I buy four. I always buy two times the quantity. A, if one breaks, B, if we lose one in the water, and then we always have the same type of hose clamps on board for later on. Clamp on thumb. The hose bip goes from this location to this location. You want the hose clamp equally divided between the edge of the hose and the edge of the bip. So that's why you'll see this spacing that I have is the same spacing as I have here. That way when you're squeezing the clamp on the hose bit barbs, it has enough to grab and hold on. In this case, we don't have a lot of pressure. It's, it's water pressure, it's small. But we were doing a 100 pound pressurized airline or we're doing a special line for fuel. Those little details are the difference between a clamp that's working and not working. A lot of people put double clamps on. If your hose bip doesn't have enough length for two clamps, you're wasting your money. And actually the secondary clamp, it can actually take the hose and cut the inside on the edge of the hose bip. So a properly diameter clamp with the correct width on the right hose, one works fine. Plug the pump back in. I'm going to have Yana go upstairs and turn it on, and that way, in case I get leaks and water flying over, I can yell at her to shut it off in a hurry. Our test started out okay. Water filter was leaking. I probably should have checked to make sure that gasket was properly seated. I assumed it was okay, but again, something you can only really test under pressure. If we were working with fuel, I would have set up a temporary pressure test outside by the dock box. In this case, it's only water. I've got to clean the bilge anyway. A little fresh, clean water isn't bothering anything. Second test is working better. We still have a little leaking here. So what we had before is when you would turn the water on, it would variable speed and you could hear it going mm, mm, mm. It was pulsating, pulling the water from the tank all the way to the front of the galley. Now, if what I assumed was going to be correct, that there's capacity added within the filtration tank, so we have filtration and capacity. I turn the water on, it should no longer pulsate. It should just continually run. Capacity surge means that you can turn the water on and off. 
pretty fast without needing to the pump always the cycle. If you just want to quickly rinse something, then you haven't used a lot of energy with the pump turning on and off. We always turn the pump off when we're not using the water. 500 gallon tank, 1000 gallon tank, you've got the water on and you spring a line or a leak and you don't know about it, you're underway, you're under sail. You just put a 500 gallons of nice clean water into your bilge. Hopefully your bilge pumps pump it out, but now you have zero water. The other issue is many boats sink on land because the water fills the bilge at an accelerated rate because it's being pumped into your bilge as opposed to a leak. Best practice, shut the water off. As I always had stated in the past, keep your valuable items away from the water. <laughs> valuable item, non-valuable item. Not that you're going to listen to this, or you probably will, but your wife will not. But drop a few things in and they'll get the point. Make sure that you have the right materials before you start the job, because one, missing hose clamp and your job was wasted. Number two, make sure that you have a spare or two around, so if you do lose something, you can continue. Number three, make your list, make a plan in your head, put the plan on paper, and then apply the plan to the project. For me, I've been doing this for so many years, the paper and the planning happens here, but writing it down really is a secondary check that you didn't forget something. If you forget something and you're underway and the hose blasts off and you fill your bilge full of water, now you don't have any water, you have to go back to where you were. So after you go through your checklist that you put together for doing the job, go down below and check the list again that you did your job. Until the next disaster, which could be 30 seconds or three hours, you guys have a great day. I'm gonna watch my wife take her clothes off and tell To try and do our shower test. So long she forgot how to use the shower. Scrub away. Bye. Scrub that basilisk. <laughs> I haven't felt so clean in years. It just feels nice to scrub feel clean, yeah. I because agree. I didn't even have time in the marinas to scrub myself properly. And there's a lot of places to scrub. <laughs>